means that all of their parts have to be congruent and like order matters of what you say. So it means all of the corresponding angles are congruent, all the corresponding sides are congruent, uh, and then you can say this polygon is congruent to this polygon. So order matters here. So notice how they're marked with more than one thing. So corresponding angles, we could say, I don't know what the first one is, angle A has to match up with angle H because they're both marked with two bars, right? Angle B would match up with J because they're both marked with one bar. Whoa, my goodness. What do they have? Right, because they both are marked the same. So that's how you know they go together. And then that means angle C has to be congruent to angle K. The, the sides matter, right? And it doesn't matter which way you say it as long as it's the, right, the same size. So AB would be congruent with which side? Yeah, and so maybe order maybe should matter. We're talking about angles here because I would go AB with, with two angles marked to one. So I would go HJ with two angles marked. AB, HJ. What else could we say? BC. JK. <laughs> and um, AC is congruent with HK. Really nice on here that they're all color coded. But order matters. So when you're saying this triangle is congruent to this triangle, you have to make sure the angles line up. So if I call this triangle ABC, it would have to be congruent to what triangle? Because the, the angles have to match, right? 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. So we could say triangle ABC is congruent to HJK. And all of the corresponding angles match up. So order really matters. Does that make sense? Also, it's color-coded. It's very nicely color-coded. Not on your paper, though. <laughs> and I only gave you one of these on your homework, but it does kind of make you understand what it means to be congruent. It says, show that the polygons are congruent by identifying all the congruent <coughs> corresponding parts and then write a congruent statement. So we would say on this one, angle A is congruent to which angle? Uh, right, because they match up perfectly. The other one's all switched around. You can't have um, we are in this one. Angle A is congruent to angle R. Angle E is congruent to like there's cup Q. Do I cut <laughs> I know. All of my life has been a lie. <laughs> Angle D is congruent to S. We're not trusting a pic we're not proving something. It's telling us that these are congruent, right? It says show it's congruent by showing all the congruent parts. So we're really trusting that it tells us congruent, so we're just saying which ones match up. It doesn't up. tell us that they are. They're just saying, like, uh, hey, show us that these are congruent. But it's not saying these are congruent, so show us. It's implied by saying show us they're congruent that they're congruent. It doesn't say prove they're congruent. It's saying sh match them up. Just, all right. Do I need to keep writing all this out, or do you kind of oh, get it? Yeah. So if I so said, what what shape is this again? Pentagon. Pentagon. If I said A, B, C, D, E, what order would this have to be in? R, C, S. No, R, C, D, S, Q. Right? So A, B, C, D, E, you have to go in the same order. R, C, D, S, Q. Okay, so here's what's really great. If you can prove that two polygons are congruent, then you know all of their corresponding parts are congruent, which means we're going to do a whole lot of stuff proving stuff about triangles. And if we can prove the triangles are congruent, then we can prove any of the corresponding angles are congruent or any of the corresponding sides are congruent. Wait, don't answer it. That was my, this is my congruent statement right here. I skipped all the other part. I didn't want to write out all the angles and all the sides because it annoyed me. So if two polygons are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. For triangles, that's what this chapter is about, we say corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 
you want to have to write that out every time you do a proof for triangles? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So there is shorthand for this, accepted shorthand for this. You can't make up your own shorthand. But we can say corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Or the notation is CPCCC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So don't try to memorize the letters. Like, memorize what it stands for. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of the triangles are congruent. Isosceles. We haven't talked about our good buddies, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive for a while. Oh, but, we, but we do them in proofs all the time. And they just say if we're talking about triangles, that you can do the same property. So remember, for reflexive means it's congruent to itself. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. That's reflexive. What does symmetric property say? Right? Order doesn't matter. So it just says if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFG, then you can split the order. Triangle EFG is congruent to triangle ABC. And transitive, we use all the time in our proofs, says if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFG and triangle EFG is congruent to triangle JKL, what can we say? You can take out the part that's the same and combine what's left, right? So those properties haven't changed. They're just saying they're true for angles. They're true for segments. Now they're saying they're true for triangles. So nothing new there, just talking about triangles. Okay, let's, let's do some work here. I left you a blank paper for a proof in a minute. In the triangle, I'm oh, sorry, in the diagram, triangle ITP is congruent to triangle NGO. Find the values of X and Y. So this is where they're not going to be facing the same way. You have to match up which parts go together, right? So if I want to find um, this angle, angle O, which angle in the other triangle is congruent to angle O? Right? Angle O has to be congruent to angle P because they're in the same position. Do you see what I'm saying? So since I know angle O is congruent to angle P, then I can just plug that in. So it's just a lot of algebra, but it's making you use the geometry to do that. So I can say 6y minus 14 is just equal to 14. Right? That's not a hard problem, but you just got to know which ones that make equal to each other. So 6y equals 54, y equals 9. Yes? Okay. Now I gotta find x. So what else do I know? Ng is x minus 2y. Which segment in the other triangle will be congruent to ng? IT. Because ng are the first two, so it would be the segment we match it up with. Because we match up the corresponding parts. So we can say i. It is equal to ng. What do we know about it? Oh, decimals. And instead of writing 2y, are you okay if I write minus 18 here? Why could I write minus 18 here? Because we found y equals 9 already, so I'm just going to say 2 times 9 is minus 18. Again, that's not a hard problem to solve. It's doing the geometry to get there. Add 18, and what do I get there? 25 and a half? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, this is another theorem. Again, I don't make you write all these out word for word, but you have to know these when we have a test or a quiz. Um, you have to know these theorems in order to solve these problems. So the third angle theorem says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. Does that make sense? 
If you know angle C is the same as angle K and angle B is the same as angle J, do those other two angles have to be the same? Why? They have to add up to 180, right? So if these two are the same as this, there's only one number that could go for the other angle, right? So again, we could prove that. We kind of just walked through the proof. We just have to write it all out. So we could say that we know angle L is congruent to angle L. Angle A. Angle A, sorry. So read through number three if you haven't already and see if you can think through the um, what we're supposed to do here. A lot of letters there, right? The drawing of a tower's roof is composed of congruent triangles all converging at a point at the top. If IJK is congruent to angle IKJ and IJK equals 72, find JIH. <laughs> so let's label what we know. Where's IJK? IJK. That's like a new, that's a new text logo there. IJK. Um, IJK, that's this angle, yes? IKJ, that's this angle. And it says IJK, this equals 72 degrees. So that means we know this equals 72 degrees. Yes? Which means, can we figure out what that angle is? What would it be? Do the math. 144, 180 minus 144, 36. Is that true? Kind of another important feature here is they tell us it's composed of all congruent triangles, which means all of these are the same all the way around, right? And so it says find the measure of JIH. JIH. That's this angle. So what's it have to be? 36. That's not that bad, right? It looks a lot when you read it, but you just got to break it down. Break it down. Okay? We, we can read, yay. Okay, let's do it. Okay. If you really prefer a flow group, you can do a flow group here. Anybody? How about a note? So, they give us a whole lot of stuff here, right? So, write a two-column proof. Given this picture, I believe the givens are marked up here, but let's just check. They give us that angle L is congruent to angle P. Is that marked for us? Yes. They give us LM is congruent to PO. Yes. They give us LN is congruent to, to PN. And MN is congruent to NO. We're trying to show that the triangles are congruent to each other, which means we need to show all their corresponding parts are equal. How many parts did they already tell us were equal? Uh, Four. How many parts are in a triangle? Three. <laughs> <laughs> if we're trying to find congruent parts, there's six. What are they? What are the six parts? Angles and lines. And there's three angles and there's three sides. They've already done one, two, three, four, six of the problem for us. You have to check the assumptions. That's what that mathematician said. Why do you want to check the assumptions? So yeah. we're going to write our givens out. If you haven't already, you could do that. Do you know any other corresponding angles that are congruent right now just by looking at it? What else do you know? That's the, it's on the next page. Just say it's the page three. If you wanted to make it real fancy and make it seem like you did a giant proof, you could write each one of those givens as a separate step, right? So you could be like, man, that's a 
forms that Bruce gives us by giving. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to write it all over the board. Make sure it up. It is important that you write out what you're giving today. We had a teacher here once that just let people do this for their giving. I hate that. I would have fired him over that. I don't have the power to fire people, but I would have done it. He wasn't fired. No one's been fired in a long time. He said he got fired. He didn't get fired. No, he he resigned he respectfully. No, she said it when I first told us about that. She said that he got fired. I was probably lying to you. I was probably lying. He didn't get fired. That's pretty assuring. He left on his own accord. That's why you should question everything I tell you. <laughs> this um, we need to show that the other two angles that they didn't tell us were congruent are congruent. How do I know that this angle is congruent to this angle? Vertical the third angle will clear up. Vertical. I don't. I don't know the two angles yet, right? But you're. You're. Se one second. I'll be back to you. I know these two are congruent because of vertical angles. Yes. So I can say. Don't just say angle is. Angle L N O is congruent to angle P N O. Is that the right order? N O. And I know that because of the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles we learned in chapter one. It is chapter four. We are still using vertical angles on a daily basis. Okay, I'll be back to you now. Now look what I know. I know this angle and this angle are congruent to this angle and this angle. So how can I say that angle M is congruent to angle O? The third angle theorem, because I can show if the other two are congruent, then the, the third one has to be. So step three, this one is bad. can I just say angle M? Yeah. Yeah. Angle M is congruent to angle O by the third angle theorem. <laughs> what is my last step of my proof going to say? What I'm trying to prove, triangle LMN is congruent to triangle PON. McKinsey just said this one isn't that bad. If you just get over your fear of proofs, triangle <laughs> proofs are not that bad. They're really nice because you're just proving that the angles and the sides are congruent. Like you, you don't feel like you're just out searching in a world of statements and reason. You know what you're trying to prove. We want to say, how do we know they're congruent? Because all the parts match up. So whenever you want to say, because all the parts match up, C, B, C, C, C. Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay?
make sure you write it down. 12 through 16 all, 19, 20, 22, 24, 37. There is a good chance our homework quiz tomorrow will have a proof on it because I want you to try these. These are not that bad. Prove all the angles are congruent. Prove all the sides are congruent.